Hey guys, welcome back to the Rhino Waxing in UK One Wheel channel. So, a brand new board. Never had one of these in the workshop before. Amplid. Um, read up a lot about them and they are actually a very good board. An all mountain kind of board. Great level of kicker on both front and back. So, really good on powder. Those backcountry kickers, you know, th th this is kind of like a, definitely an all mountain board. Um, very well made. Carbon stringers. Yeah, nice top coat. Like I say, 155 in length, so a decent size. It almost looks like kind of a wide stance. We've got some big bindings on here. Again, these union bindings are just awesome. But again, what I will always do is I do in all my photos or videos is put a photo of these bindings. So this one is here and this one is here. And that way then you know exactly where your board is set up to if these were to come loose. And as I said in the other videos, because this is the third uh, board in the Ben series, as I call it. Basically, he bought a Burton. He bought Roxy and we've got this bad boy. So this is the third um, board to do and I'm really looking forward to doing this one. A little bit more detail than the Roxy board, but not quite as much as that Burton Custom that I did. Um, again, awesome bindings. But again, the top tip, which I have said in previous videos, the screws that hold these in obviously go through plastic. Do not try and over tighten them. Maybe a little bit of blue lock type. Um, I haven't got some to hand, but I have got some in here somewhere. Always a little bit of that um, because obviously once they pull through that plastic base, they're done. You need to buy a new foot plate. So again, just tweak them down. No need to over tighten them because like I say, I can see these are starting to pull through, um, which is a shame. So I'll be very delicate taking these off. Um, the unscrew, slide the base plate and then you can get to the base screw. But guys, let's have a quick detailed look. Bit of time lapse. Let's take these bindings off and have a look at this. Apple. So here we are. I've detailed this top coat, got that shine up lovely. What a lovely board, nice texture to it, um, but gave this a really good polish. I think you'll agree, looks like new. Super trick. Anyway, let's flip this bad boy over. So this board's seen some action, which is cool. And again, this is why I say, if you can, when storing your bindings, in the winter in England, see these four dots here? Do make sure you loosen off your bindings. I've said that in a quite a few videos of mine. So when you get back, just crack off your screws and basically leave your binding loose on the underside because as you put it away, it gets hot and you get these pockets because you've got all that tension on those screws pulling through and the board's got hot, cold, hot, cold and you get these indentations. No doubt we've got it down this end as well. Yeah, there we go. One, two... And I learned the hard way on my Jones board, because that's exactly what's happened on my Jones board. Again, you can't see the other six, just the four screws. There's normally six screw holes, just the four. So yes, do make sure that you loosen off your uh, bindings. But anyway, not too bad on the base of here. We've got some Marks here. This is all colour detail. I'll put a little bit of P-Tex just in here and here. Have a hole there and a hole there. But uh, got a lot of cross chatting here. We'll get the direction put back into this board. Bit of a gouge there, just there. A little bit of a get away with some black P-Tex on that, which would be nice. But yeah, not too bad other than that. Um, just a jolly good scrape. The Roxy board, which was the second board I'd done of the three, um, the dead material on the base of that was horrendous. But yeah, we'll get this looking a lot, lot better than what it is now. So, pop you back in the stand. Let's get on, do some edges, do the sides. Then we're going to do some P-Tex. Then we're going to do base scrape. Then we're going to detail, directional brush. Then wax it. Then boom, this thing's going to fly. So, pop you back in the stand. Let's crack on.
Right, so what we have here, you can see a slight deviation in the rail. And there's a line here, and there's a bit of a crack on the back side of this board. Now, if I were just to get like a standing knife blade, there's actually a crack there. You can see where the rail has gone in. And if we have a look on the side, it actually has gapped open. So what I'm going to do is lay some epoxy in here. And then I'm going to put another, um, my plastic plates either side. But I'm going to warm this up with the hairdryer, get it nice and warm. And I'm going to put some epoxy in up high. And I'm going to clamp this down. Put some epoxy this side. And then I'm going to have to clean the base afterwards. Just to try and sandwich that together to stop any moisture going in. Because that crack is not good. As you can see just there. That is not good. So I'm going to put some epoxy in and blow air dry it, and I'm going to try and wipe off the excess. Um, I most probably will base scrape this anyway, but we need to get this because there's an immense high spot on here. So that's something I'm going to pop in the stand. The edges have been done. I'm just going to detail one other side edge, but I notice this and uh, that needs some attention. So let's crack on and get this done. really good that's a lot flatter than what it was um let's pop you in my hand and i'll uh, give you a quick look so yes there we go you can actually see that line a little bit more prominently now but now you can it's just catching but where before it douche it stopped it's actually now flowing over quite nicely and what's really really good is the epoxy is pushed out of the side of the rail so what we've got liquidized and gone in is obviously spread and squeezed out the residue, which is fantastic. So that is a lot, lot flatter now. A lot, lot flatter. Yeah, really pleased with that. And that rail is also a lot straighter. So you can actually see that we're pushing that down. We don't have that indentation. So we pop this back into place. Hopefully that will last, like I say, if not, hopefully if I get to service it again, I'll just keep my eye on it as I do with a lot of stuff. But we'll metal scrape that. Um, and away we go. But you can already see the edges are looking so much sharper. So I've done those on both rails. The edges are great. So it's just to work on the base now. So we'll get some P-texting dropped in. Black for black areas and clear for the coloured. Um, then we'll give this a full scrape. Getting rid of these lines that are going across. So they all go this direction. Um, and get some texture back in the bottom of this board. And then get it waxed. But we'll get that scraped part of the process. And just tidy up that excess there. So yeah, really pleased with that repair. Really, really pleased. Dead happy with that. Right, let's crack on. Right, okay guys, that is looking so much better. Um, I've got a bit of base scraping, so a nice sharp scraper. And we're going to basically just do the, the whole base of this board and get this as flat as possible. Um, and then what we'll do is lay down some P-Tex, use the same scraper and get all that residue of P-Tex, making sure the board is nice and flat. We've got a couple of ridges just here and nicks just here and gouges just here and here so uh, we've got clear and black p-tex and if you are p-texing always wear a mask because this stuff absolutely stinks and if you get this on your hands boy it burns and it doesn't stop burning it is very very painful um in a couple of my videos you see me absolutely freak out because i caught it my finger with it and it kills we're gonna get this scraped, we're gonna get this board looking mint. So, bit of time lapse, let's crack on and get this looking super smooth.
Wow, we have laid down a fair bit of PTEX on this board. There is dinks and scrapes and divots and holes all over it, but we're gonna make sure it looks good. All this stuff you see here, this is all the PTEX stuff. Basically, we just scrape all this off, as well as all the dead material on the base of the board. So all this gray area is just basically like dead material. Um, yeah, and that's basically what we do. We lay the PTEX down. The scrape has got to be super sharp. So I'm just going to quickly sharpen it. I've got a 90 degree file sharpener over there, which basically sharpens this up a treat. And then what we do, you can hear us scraping it off. So you don't just go in one direction. So basically work it across, across the board from different angles. And that way then you're going to leave the P-Tex in the hole. Got a nice run down through here. You can hear it. Picking it up, you all do 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 And we're just going over. So that noise becomes smooth, like so. Um, but yes, there is a lot on here. And never be scared to put a bit of pressure on. And we just start making it straight and flat to get all that dead material off. And if you need to lay a little bit more P-Tex down once you've finished, then just go back over and add a bit more. So yeah, there we go. Right, back to time lapse. Right, so this amplifier board has been sat and it has cured and it has cooled and it is ready to get stripped. This is the third board in the family of three that I've had done. And again, a lot of work, polished that top coat. That looks lovely now. So much PTEX. We used a whole PTEX stick. A whole lot of those in the base of this board. Just dripping it around, filling up holes and divots and scrape lines and you name it. Oh, what are those? Oh, what are those? But we got it all scraped. It looks mint and it's nice and flat. We have got a very slight raise here from that crack that you saw earlier in the video. And that epoxy is on the side. I've left it slightly raised just purely and simply. I don't want to take it back too much just because I don't want to make it weaker and it crack again. Um, but that is as flat as I physically get it. We put a lot of heat into that and we have pressed that over like 24 hours through some G clamps. We have got 95% out of that indentation in the rail as well, which I'm really, really pleased about. And I think this board's gonna come up lovely. Um, quite a lot of dead material came off the base of this board, which was quite interesting. And the rails are so sharp. Um, cut my finger a treat on them. So they are ready to rock and roll. So this board is going to fly. So we're going to get this wax stripped off, get the bindings back on, do the before and after, and boom, another board done. Let's crack on. So there we are, the third board of the set of three. Um, this has come up so, so well. Um, from the repair on the front just here to the basically the shine. 
The shine on this board is awesome. We've got that definition back in the black, which really does emphasize the obviously orange of the base of this board. And again, we've got shine from tip to tail. Really, really pleased with this. Really, really pleased. And all the lines are going in the right direction. They're not going that way, they're going that way. The majority of them anyway. But guys, thank you ever so much indeed for watching. Again, share this video with your friends. If anybody in the Devon area wants to use me, I am more than happy to service their skis or snowboards. If you want to support the channel, because it all helps, you can become a member, obviously $2.99 a month, or you can buy me a coffee if you go in the description below, which will be really, really cool. It all helps. And guys, thank you ever so much indeed for watching. But until next time, until the next snowboard, mini build, BMX build, or whatever I'm doing, we will see you soon.